Howdy, everyone. All right, I'm trying to set up this camera here as best I can to film. Hold on a second. All right, so as long as I don't bump that, it should be okay. What I want to try to demonstrate, and I don't even know if this camera angle is the best or if it's even going to work, but... What I want to try to demonstrate is, you can see, I have to put this rivet in here. And <clears throat> I've got the knuckles of the hinge hanging down in the way. And I've got this little manifold here that's also in the way. You really can't get a bucking bar in here. At least I can't. The couple that I have won't fit in here. And I can't really get the squeezer in here without doing something kind of different. So I'm going to do something kind of different. I've used this technique, of course this will be off camera, but down the side of the fuselage, the side hinges, I had to take the hinge out and um, I drilled out the rivets pulled the hinge out, put the hinge back in, and then I had to re-rivet, but that was difficult to do with the engine mount in the way. Down at the bottom corner where the gear leg is, um, you can't get a squeezer in there. So I used this method that I'm getting ready to show you now down there, and it worked really well. So I'm going to try to explain it. I'm going to try to maybe show you how it works, although when I get in here with the squeezer and everything else, you probably won't be able to see. So it's simple as this. I use the 4-inch, what's considered the no-hole. Hold on. Great. So I just use the 4-inch. No hole, meaning that this part here is flat. There's no hole in it for a, uh, a set of any kind. It's just flat and smooth. And this is four inches, this throat here. So this is what I use. The problem is when you use this in here, if you use it just like this, this flat part is going to squeeze shut the knuckle. It's going to end up compressing the knuckle and squeezing it. So you need some kind of a standoff here so that this part can reach around the knuckle and you can still squeeze the rivet. So what I do is I'll use I'll use a set of feeler gauges, right? Just a standard set of feeler gauges. And now the feeler gauge itself acts as a die set, if you will, on the squeezer. So I can take this, and you'll see that there's an adjustment screw here with some threads sticking out. On the other side, there's just a, a flat head rivet. So use the flat head rivet side to go up against the skin. That way this will stay nice and flat against the skin on the inside. So this will get inserted in here like this. And now that no hole yoke on the squeezer can rest against this this face will rest against the end of the rivet. And this the gap that this stack up of feeler gauges will prevent the knuckle itself from being squished. What's nice about this is you can remove some of the feeler gauges to make this thin. You can stick your squeezer in here and you can squeeze the rivet just a little bit now you have a little bit more space. Add in some more feeler gauge. You can add in a couple more thicknesses of feeler gauge. Squeeze it some more. Now you have a little bit more space. 
add in some more feeler gauge and final squeeze it. You want to do that relatively quickly in as few steps as possible because you don't want to work hard into that rivet. So what I'm going to do then is try to figure out just by eyeballing how fat this stack up needs to be so that this knuckle doesn't get squished. And then I'll hold this in place. I'll bring my squeezer in underneath it. And then I'll squeeze the rivet and then I'll check it. And if I need to squeeze it some more, I'll just add in some more feeler gauge. However many. So now this is thicker. Put it in here again, fit the squeezer, the no hole squeezer up underneath here, hit it again, and I'll work it until the rivet is nice and set. Like I said, I did that on the side hinge because I had to remove it, and I don't remember why, but it worked really well. So let me see if I can do that on camera. You probably won't be able to see it because the squeezer and everything else will be in the way. So let's see, that looks like a good stack there. But I don't want to over squeeze the rivet either. But I can adjust, I could use this stack up on the feeler gauge so that my knuckle won't get squished. But if I'm afraid the rivet itself will get over squeezed. I could make that adjustment with the squeezer itself. So I'm going to take this spacer out. And I'll start with just my 3 8 thick die set. And uh, I'll put my feeler gauge in here. I'll put this in and I'll squeeze it and uh, see, see where we are. Okay, so that, that fits inside there, and it's not going to squeeze the knuckle. So let me see if I can do this here, nice and slow. Let's see. Might be a little too thick. This is very cumbersome trying to do this one-handed. It'd be nice. I, I might have to bring some help out here to get this right. But I don't know. It's too bad everything is in the way to show kind of what I'm talking about, what I'm trying to demonstrate here. The feeler gauges would go between the yoke and the rivet. Something like that. And then you do the squeeze. So I don't think I'm going to be able to do this on camera because I'm going to need an extra set of hands in here and that's just going to block the view. But 
Uh, that's kind of the idea. I don't know if that really makes a lot of sense, but it does work. It works quite well, actually. So let me turn the camera off. I'm going to try to get this squeezed and I'll come back. Howdy everyone. Okay, so I got that rivet set and it came out really, really nice, just like the other ones that I've done with this method. And I'll show you those here in a second. But again, I just use a set of feeler gauges and you can see this feeler gauge. This is the rivet end. This down here is the nut end. And you can see there's not a lot of space between the rivet and the feeler gauges. And that's what you want because this stack up then sits in here behind the knuckles of the hinge itself. I don't know if that lighting is very good, but again, this is the rivet that I had just done. It's directly over this manifold and there's a knuckle between the two. So the feeler gauges again slip up underneath here and they take up the gap so that the squeezer won't crush this knuckle. And then the, the no-hole yoke will slide underneath here. And then you can do your squeeze. And if you don't have it squeezed enough, then you can add shims just like you would normally do on the squeezer itself and keep checking it until you get it nice and set. So what I'm going to try to do is just show you what that looks like. I'm going to hand the camera off. Here. Of course, now the microphone is backwards, so I got to yell. <laughs> Let me grab the squeezer. I'm not going to have the hose connected. So again, just for demonstration purposes, this will slide up underneath here like that. And then this will slide up underneath. And the course this part will then be up against the feeler gauge and then you just squeeze it like you normally would and if you don't set the rivet enough all of your adjustment is up here with shims just like you would normally use it so go slow be very patient if you need to what's nice about the feeler gauge is like I said you can also you can always add or subtract thickness as needed and um, that's how I did that. Take that back. So that seemed to work quite well. I hope you could hear what I was just saying because when I hand the microphone off, it was quite a ways away from me and I was trying to yell. But So um, the other place that I had used that same method was down here. Let me put my squeezer down. So... I've got a couple of rivets here for this hinge that I had to redo and you can't get a squeezer in here normally but using that same method I could use the feeler gauges drop them down in here and then um, I can get the the no hole yoke in here on top of the feeler gauge and go ahead and set these rivets and that seemed to work out quite well so that's it I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish squeezing the rest of these rivets. Actually, I've only got one more, this one here. But I'll check this footage. Hopefully it's, it, it came out decent enough that I can actually post it. Um, but we'll see how things go. All right. Talk to you guys later.